What's up, everybody? I want to talk about the song Bouncing Around the Room by the band Fish. Pretty simple tune. Goes a little something like this. The woman was a dream I had, though rather hard to keep. But when my eyes were watching hers, they closed, and I was still asleep. But when my hand was holding hers, she whispered words and I awoke. Faintly bouncing around the room, the echo of whomever spoke. And I awoke, faintly bouncing around the room, the echo of whomever spoke. Okay, so let's break that down right there. The first chord is this G. The woman was a drink to the D, to the A, to the D, okay? Um, I think Trey is actually playing the G up here. The woman was a dream I had, though rather hard to keep. But when my eyes were watching hers, they closed, and I was still asleep. Which is probably easier for, you know, uh, making that chord. Not as many people know this chord, but I highly recommend getting familiar with this chord. It's awesome. It's this, this G here, you know, at this try it's just the one the five and the one again and then the three is up here so it's that three in the root which has got this nice sound to it so it's sort of be like a g over b which uh, i'm really i really like this inversion here this g moving that to the third um g over b here so I really like these chords. Trey used this chord a lot right here, this formation. Maybe not in this song, but in like Wicapaw Groove and a bunch of stuff he uses it. Um, you got... You know, that's another tutorial. Anyways, so that first chord being the G, D, A, G, D, A, to the D, and then A, to the G, D, and this is where this formation starts, the D to A, C, I like this C again with that root in the third, to the G, or you can do C to G here, you know, and I think Trey might move it in to get that root. that's what Gordon's playing and you know Trey might be matching him with these root heavy chords here right um, super cool chord progression and that's how the song ends at the end they just outro that jam that chord progression D to A C to G but before we get there there's a little uh, turnaround at the end of the second verse so my son was poor but I was sure of the silence and or it's uh what are the lyrics? I forget, but it does that thing. They dance above me as I sink. I see them through a crystal haze. Hear them bouncing round the room. The never ending choral maze. A crystal haze. Hear them bouncing round the room. Oh, wait, G. Oops. Never ending choral maze. So it's again, it's that D to A, C to G, and then it's this uh, C and B four, and now once more I'm bouncing around the room. So it's a C to the G to the A to the D, and I think Trey might just do C to the G to the A to the D. Um, you could play this whole song with open chords down here too. Um, Trey's not doing that. I never have. I think it's a really great exercise, just as an exercise. However you're going to play it live is one thing, but as an exercise, try to learn chord progressions where you're not moving your positioning at all. So, you know, it's staying right here, and I can do all these chords with this G, whoops, sorry, G, you know, D, A, D, the C here, you know, G. Um, if, if you're singing into a microphone, you don't, you know, have to look down at your hand and move your hand it's kind of nice but it's just good to sort of get familiar with these triads these accords really close to each other and so i'm a big fan of like 
seeing the chords and then knowing sort of the scales around them, right? So like a G to the A to the C, I'm sorry, yeah, G to the A to the C to the G. I messed that up. So like the D, A, G, or C to the G. hand but a lot of it can live right there um, if you see those chords right all right let's start with these sorry it's kind of jumping around here to the A to the C to the G kind of the G one there is you know, I wouldn't, I'm not as familiar. I see it more up here. That's this one. Um, here. It would be like that. You know, it's nice. Um, I should probably get more familiar with this one. That's the whole tune, and then the outro does that thing, the D to the A, the C to the G. And then there's this cool lead melody that Trey wrote, because Trey's the greatest, and he comes up with the coolest stuff, and my thoughts are that he was practicing these sort of riffs, these patternized riffs over these chords, and you know, he was like, I wanna write these into a song so that I get better at them, I play them still. So he's got this here, based around this D major, right? I love this chord with your root up here. So you got that scale. So these four are within that D major scale. And then it moves to the A. And it kind of just walks. It's like similar to that A arpeggio, right? That's a tricky one. So yeah, second, first, second, roll that finger, or just lay them both down, and then it repeats itself in a, a, a whole step down, right, for that C, um, that in and of itself, is just a great exercise, a great drill to, to practice. It's really melodic, it sounds lovely, but it's very, you know, repetitive with these fingers. And these are patterns, especially this one. You know, that you're gonna wanna be able to play fast. This one, I don't use too much live. I use those three. But now I don't roll up to that. The five there, you know, the five, the A here, one, three, five, one, three, four, and then this pattern again. So great exercise. And then it jumps up to here, and it's following this this sort of D major shape here. I would su suspect. So it's going. And then it jumps to here which follows this uh, G shape, or A shape, I'm sorry, A, you know, A, D, moved up to here is A, and it follows, follows sort of that shape for that scale, and then it goes to the C, to the G, just repeats itself. So D, A, <laughs> to the G. Another great drill, great exercise to get better at it. You know, 
uh, Trey might be using his third finger on that second one. So the first one, I would guess he's using his pinky. He could be using his third finger. And then here he could be using his third for both of them. Song. there's not that many videos of it so it's kind of harder to find that i would suggest getting better at both you know use these fingers every which way you can because um, in the moment when you're just trying to come up with something and the, the moment calls for that physical ability to be able to do something you're able to do it you know whether it's the pinky or the third you know if you want to do third here and you needed your pinky up, or And then also you can do it so it's like a, a ham, a pull off. That's sort of easier, you know, ham, pull offs. So pick, pull off, pick. That's tough. That's a good finger exercise to really strengthen your fingers there. So I'm guessing, you know, Trey was probably practicing these, these licks, these drills. And he's like, I want to write this into a song. I want to make it a melodic pattern, write it into a song. He seems very good about doing that with a lot of his music, a lot of his songs, whereas these fundamental things that he makes melodic and puts them in a song. So then he sort of, you know, remembers them, memorizes them and gets better at them. Um, it's really cool. I, I really admire this guy's work and everything he does and he's put on guitar. Anyways, so that's the second movement. Then there's a final third movement, which starts up here on this A. And it kind of follows, you know, this D here, right? And then instead of, you know, moving much, it's just to here for that A, you know, follows that. So D to the A. To, and then to the C shape, this. To the G shape. It, it's brilliant. It's so cool. It's so good. I love it. It's so musical. And it hangs there for like another four, I think four bars or three bars, something like that. And just ends like that. Um, but that's the whole song. What a great exercise, you know, do it where you're picking every note. And then do it where you're pulling off. That's tricky. This one's easier. This one's tricky. D, A, C, G. So really cool chord progression, really cool um, lead sort of melodic riffing on top of that. And then if you ever wanna just loop that part and solo on top of it, it's a good song to sort of practice soloing on. It changes keys, so it makes you kind of sort of have to reposition. You know, it starts in that D. goes to that A, it stays in the key, still in D major. But the moment it goes to that C, now you have to shift, shift. You can shift, shift to that, that C major, and then to that G, or just stay in C major, because G is in there. Or sometimes you can kind of shift that D to the D mixolydian, to that flatted seventh in the D mix. That's sort of how I'll think about it. 
uh, I love to do that with these chord progressions that change keys. If it's possible to think like home, you know, that first chord is D, and so I'm thinking home is D. And then it repositions, st I want to keep it in D, but I got to change the mode to the D mixolydian. So that's one way I can think of it too. I also love when it when songs change keys is just articulating the chords and sort of arpeggiating the chords and, and blending in the scales with that, the modes with that. So in that case, you know, you got this D, this G, this C, G. How nice is that? There's very little to do there, but you're just taking that one, you're walking it down to you know the natural seven there, which is the three in that A, but it's just the one, the natural seven, flatted seventh to your six, right? Like together alone, it's sort of sounds chromatic, which it is and isn't as melodic, but over that chord progression. I don't know. There's a lot you can kind of think of and do around there, but sort of that's the idea. Um, let me just play this loop I got and see if I can do a little bit. Maybe it's inspiring to get some ideas.
That's the bouncing around the room, 20 minute video. <laughs> Thanks for sticking along with the end, to the end. Um, if you like the sound here, this is my, um, this is my Helix preset. This is all through the Helix direct on the computer. It's my Trey Anastasio 23 preset. Um, right now I'm on a single coil pickup with both of them, which I think is nice, you know. got sort of that pretty clean oh I got my um, overdrive slight overdrive on there there's a totally clean there's a slight overdrive so if you pick soft you know Thanks for watching. Yeah, you can buy that preset uh, at joshpearson.org slash merch. Um, thanks again for watching these videos. If you got any questions or uh, other stuff you want me to go run through, please uh, say so in the comments. Thanks for watching. Y'all have a beautiful day.